The Moorish Science Temple of America is an American national and religious organization founded by noble Drew Alley. He based it on the premise that African Americans are descendants of the Moabites and thus are Moorish by nationality, and Islamic by faith. Ali put together elements of major traditions to develop a message of personal transformation through historical education, racial pride and spiritual uplift. His doctrine was also intended to provide African Americans with a sense of identity in the world and to promote civic involvement. One primary tenet of the Moorish Science Temple is the belief that African Americans are of Moorish ancestry, specifically from the Moroccan Empire. According to Ali, this area included other countries that today surround Morocco. To join the movement, individuals had to proclaim their Moorish nationality. They were given nationality cards. In religious texts, adherents refer to themselves racially as Asiatics, as the Middle East is also Western Asia. Adherents of this movement are known as Moorish American Muslims and are called Moorish scientists in some circles. The Moorish Science Temple of America was incorporated under the Illinois Religious Corporation Act 805 ILCS 110. Timothy Drew, known to its members as Prophet Noble Drew Alley, founded the Moorish Science Temple of America in 1913 in Newark, New Jersey, a booming industrial city. After some difficulties, Ali moved to Chicago, establishing a center there, as well as temples in other major cities. The movement expanded rapidly during the late 1920s. The quick expansion of the Moorish Science Temple arose in large part from the search for identity and context among black Americans at the time of the Great Migration to northern and midwestern cities, as they were becoming an urbanized people. Competing factions developed among the congregations and leaders, especially after the death of the charismatic Ali. Three independent organizations developed from this ferment. The founding of the Nation of Islam by Wallace Fard Muhammad in 1930 also created competition for members. In the 1930s membership was estimated at 30,000, with one-third in Chicago. During the post-war years, the Moorish Science Temple of America continued to increase in membership, albeit at a slower rate. Biography of Drew Timothy Drew was believed to have been born on January 8, 1886 in North Carolina, United States. Sources differ as to his background and upbringing. One reports he was the son of two former slaves who was adopted by a tribe of Cherokee. Another describes Drew as the son of a Moroccan Muslim father and a Cherokee mother. In 2014 an article in the online journal of race ethnicity and religion attempted to link Timothy Drew to one Thomas Drew, born January 8, 1886, using census records, a World War I draft card, and street directory records. <laughs> Founding of the Moorish Science Temple Drew Ali reported that during his travels, he met with a high priest of Egyptian magic. In one version of Drew Ali's biography, the leader saw him as a reincarnation of the founder. In others, he claims that the priest considered him a reincarnation of Jesus, the Buddha, Muhammad and other religious prophets. According to the biography, the high priest trained Ali in mysticism and gave him a lost section of the Quran. This text came to be known as the Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America not to be confused with the Islamic Quran. It is also known as the Circle 7 Quran because of its cover, which features a red 7 surrounded by a blue circle. The first 19 chapters are from the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, published in 1908 by esoteric Ohio preacher Levi Dowling. 
In the Aquarian Gospel, Dowling described Jesus's supposed travels in India, Egypt, and Palestine during the years of his life which are not accounted for by the New Testament. Chapters 20 through 45 are borrowed from the Rosicrucian work, Unto Thee I Grant with minor changes in style and wording. They are instructions on how to live, and the education and duties of adherence. Drew Ali wrote the last four chapters of the Circle 7 Quran himself. In these he wrote, The fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America need to learn to love instead of hate, and to know of their higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Holy Quran of Mecca for teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans, etc. The key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nations. The Moorish, who were the ancient Moabites, and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. Drew Ali and his followers used this material to claim, "...Jesus and his followers were Asiatic." Asiatic was the term Drew Ali used for all dark or olive-colored people, he labeled all whites as European. He suggested that all Asiatics should be allied. Drew Ali crafted Moorish science from a variety of sources, a network of alternative spiritualities that focused on the power of the individual to bring about personal transformation through mystical knowledge of the divine within. In the interwar years in Chicago and other major cities, he used these concepts to preach racial pride and uplift. His approach appealed to thousands of African Americans who had left severely oppressive conditions in the South through the Great Migration and faced struggles in new urban environments. <laughs> Practices and beliefs Ali believed that African Americans were all Moors, whom he claimed were descended from the ancient Moabites describing them as belonging to northwest Africa as opposed to Moab as the name suggests. He claimed that Islam and its teachings are more beneficial to their earthly salvation, and that their true nature had been withheld from them. In the traditions he founded, male members of the temple wear a fez or turban as head covering, women wear a turban, they added the suffixes bay or el to their surnames, to signify Moorish heritage as well as their taking on the new life as Moorish Americans. It was also a way to claim and proclaim a new identity over that lost to the slavery of their ancestors. These suffixes were a clear sign to others that while one's African tribal name may never be known to him, her, acceptance of European names given by slave masters were not theirs, either. As Drew Alley began his version of teaching the Moorish Americans to become better citizens, he made speeches like, "...a divine warning by the Prophet for the nations," in which he urged them to reject derogatory labels, such as, black, colored, and negro. He urged Americans of all races to reject hate and embrace love. He believed that Chicago would become a second Mecca. The ushers of the temple wore black fezes. The leader of a particular temple was known as a grand sheik, or governor. Noble Drew Ali had several wives. According to the Chicago Defender, he claimed the power to marry and divorce at will. History Early history In 1913, Drew Ali formed the Canaanite Temple in Newark, New Jersey. He left the city after agitating people with his views on race. Drew Ali and his followers migrated, while planting congregations in Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and Detroit. Finally, Drew Ali settled in Chicago in 1925, saying the Midwest was closer to Islam. The following year he officially registered Temple No. 9. 
There he instructed followers not to be confrontational but to build up their people to be respected. In this way, they might take their place in the United States by developing a cultural identity that was congruent with Drew Alley's beliefs on personhood. In the late 1920s, journalists estimated the Moorish Science Temple had 35,000 members in 17 temples in cities across the Midwest and Upper South. It was reportedly studied and watched by the Chicago police. Building Moorish American businesses was part of their program, and in that was similar to Marcus Garvey's Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League and the later Nation of Islam. By 1928, members of the Moorish Science Temple of America had obtained some respectability within Chicago and Illinois, as they were featured prominently and favorably in the pages of the Chicago Defender, an African-American newspaper, and conspicuously collaborated with African-American politician and businessman Daniel Jackson. Drew Alley attended the January 1929 inauguration of Lewis L. Emerson, as 27th Governor of Illinois in the state capital of Springfield. The Chicago Defender stated that his trip included, "...interviews with many distinguished citizens from Chicago, who greeted him on every hand." With the growth in its population and membership, Chicago was established as the center of the movement. <laughs> Internal split and murder In early 1929, following a conflict over funds, Claude Green Bay, the business manager of Chicago Temple No. 1 split from the Moorish Science Temple of America. He declared himself Grand Sheik and took a number of members with him. On March 15, Green Bay was stabbed to death at the Unity Hall of the Moorish Science Temple, on Indiana Avenue in Chicago. Drew Alley was out of town at the time, as he was dealing with former Supreme Grand Governor Lomax Bay, Professor Isaldine Muhammad, who had supported Green Bay's attempted coup. When Drew Alley returned to Chicago, the police arrested him and other members of the community on suspicion of having instigated the killing. No indictment was sworn for Drew Alley at that time. The death of Drew Alley Shortly after his release by the police, Drew Alley died at age 43 at his home in Chicago on July 20, 1929. Although the exact circumstances of his death are unknown, the certificate of death stated that Noble Drew Alley died from tuberculosis bronco pneumonia. Despite the official report, many of his followers speculated that his death was caused by injuries from the police or from other members of the faith. Others thought it was due to pneumonia. One more told the Chicago Defender, the prophet was not ill, his work was done and he laid his head upon the lap of one of his followers and passed out. <laughs> <laughs> Succession and schism The death of Drew Alley brought out a number of candidates to succeed him. Brother Edward Mealy L. stated that he had been declared Drew Alley's successor by Drew Alley himself. In August, within a month of Drew Alley's death, John Givens L., Drew Alley's chauffeur, declared that he was Drew Alley reincarnated. He is said to have fainted while working on Drew Alley's automobile and the sign of the star and crescent appeared in his eyes. At the September Unity Conference, Givens again made his claim of reincarnation. However, the governors of the Moorish Science Temple of America declared Charles Kirkman Bay to be the successor to Drew Alley and named him Grand Advisor. With the support of several temples each, Mealy L. and Givens L. both went on to lead separate factions of the Moorish Science Temple. All three factions Kirkman Bay, Mealy L., and Givens L. are active today. On September 25, 1929, Kirkman Bay's wife reported to the Chicago police his apparent kidnapping by one Ira Johnson. 
Accompanied by two Moorish science members, the police visited the home of Johnson, when they were met by gunfire. The attack escalated into a shootout that spilled into the surrounding neighborhood. In the end, a policeman as well as a member were killed in the gun battle, and a second policeman later died of his wounds. The police took 60 people into police custody, and a reported 1,000 police officers patrolled the Chicago South Side that evening. Johnson and two others were later convicted of murder. Kirkman Bay went on to serve as grand advisor of one of the most important factions until 1959, when the reins were given to F. Nelson Bay. Topic. Nation of Islam The community was further split when Wallace Fard Muhammad, known within the temple as David Ford L., also claimed or was taken by some to be the reincarnation of Drew Ali. When his leadership was rejected, Ford L. broke away from the Moorish Science Temple. He moved to Detroit, where he formed his own group, an organization that would become the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam denied any historical connection with the Moorish Science Temple until February 26, 2014, when Louis Farrakhan acknowledged the contributions of noble Drew Ali to the Nation of Islam and their founding principles. The 1930s Despite the turmoil and defections, the movement continued to grow in the 1930s. It is estimated that membership in the 1930s reached 30,000. There were major congregations in Philadelphia, Detroit, and Chicago. One third of the members, or 10,000, lived in Chicago, the center of the movement. There were congregations in numerous other cities where African Americans had migrated in the early 20th century. The group published several magazines, one was the Moorish Guide National. During the 1930s and 1940s, continued surveillance by police and later the FBI caused the Moors to become more withdrawn and critical of the government. FBI surveillance During the 1940s, the Moorish Science Temple specifically the Kirkman Bay faction came to the attention of the FBI, who investigated claims of members committing subversive activities by adhering to and spreading of Japanese propaganda. The investigation failed to find any substantial evidence, and the investigations were dropped. The federal agency later investigated the organization in 1953 for violation of the Selective Service Act of 1948 and sedition. In September 1953, the Department of Justice determined that prosecution was not warranted for the alleged violations. The file that the FBI created on the temple grew to 3,117 pages during its lifetime. They never found any evidence of any connection or much sympathy of the temple's members for Japan. <laughs> El Rukan connection In 1976 Jeff Fort, leader of Chicago's Black Pea Stone Nation, announced at his parole from prison in 1976 that he had converted to Islam. Moving to Milwaukee, Fort associated himself with the Moorish Science Temple of America. It is unclear whether he officially joined or was instead rejected by its members. In 1978, Fort returned to Chicago and changed the name of his gang to El Rukan, the Foundation, in Arabic, also known as Circle 7 El Rukan Moorish Science Temple of America, and the Moorish Science Temple, El Rukan Tribe. Scholars are divided over the nature of the relationship, if any, between El Rukan and the Moorish Science Temple of America. Fort reportedly hoped that an apparent affiliation with a religious organization would discourage law enforcement. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Since 1980. In 1984 the Chicago Congregation bought a building from Buddhist monks in Ukrainian village, which continues to be used for Temple No. 9. Demographic and cultural changes have decreased the attraction of young people to the Moorish Science Temple. Only about 200 members attended a convention in 2007, rather than the thousands of the past. In the early 2000s, the temples in Chicago, Philadelphia, Detroit, and Washington, D.C. had about 200 members each, and many were older people. Topic: 21st century. See sovereign citizen movement and Washita Nation. An increasing number of people claiming to follow Moorish science have filed false legal documents in various municipalities around the United States. The documents include fake liens, deeds, and property claims. The Moorish Science Temple has disavowed any affiliation with those filing the false documents, calling them radical and subversive fringe groups. Topic. See also: Black Hebrew Israelites, Five Percent Nation. Equals equals notes. <laughs>